Okay, back to our inside out, outside in project. And we're taking a look at your digital art options. All right, so notice in this example, they've got this interesting viewpoint of a subway, right? And right away, the viewpoint has been skewed. This is called a Dutch angle. Remember Dutch angle from photography? All right, so Dutch angle is when the horizon line has been skewed up or down, left or right. Here we've got this nice diagonal created. Technically, the horizon line is on a diagonal, creating this sort of disorientation. We've also got one point perspective going on where the seats of the subway car lead to one point on the horizon, creating that illusion of space and depth. So really nice viewpoint happening with the Dutch angle as well as the one point perspective. We've got some really nice digital painting going on with the subway seats, obviously, the chains and handrails, the person sitting on the seat. And then what's the outside in element? Very obvious, right? We've got the fish swimming through the subway scene. And to really push that kind of surreal inside quality, they've got the floor like it's the ocean floor, right? So really nice reflective, almost like the surface of waves on the floor. And notice once again, they're really pushing that idea of perspective. The fish that are closer to us are larger and the fish that are receding into space get smaller towards that horizon line. All right, here's another digital artwork that shows that idea of inside out. We've got the bedroom and the girl lying on the bed. And obviously there's no real walls. It's all that sort of galaxy scene. But then we have this skylight bringing us back into this idea that it's inside and this artificial lamp hanging down. And then all the indoor qualities, all the indoor things we expect inside. But notice all the really cool details. The attention to detail is amazing. We've got the bed with the bed frame, the sheets, the comforter. The comforter has a galaxy scene on it as well. Um, the treatment of the hair is really amazing. Look at all that shiny depth on the hair. Um, we've got all these other details like her dog with the little deer antlers, pattern on the pillows, pattern and texture on the headboard, lighting. Look at the lamp with all of the reflections on the lamp, books on the side table. There's even a little squirrel on her lap. We've got the extra additional chair, a rug, another pillow. Um, and then even look at this little shadow they have under the sky light or sky window here to suggest that it's inside. So really nice details, really co good complexity, bringing the outdoors in. Here's kind of an interesting play on both. We have the outside patio and then the a uh, person there is inside some sort of floating aquarium outside, right? And once again, we've got some interesting things going on. We've got the uh, one point perspective again, the leading lines of the guardrail, really beautiful shadows and reflections on the patio tiles, shadows of the guardrail, reflections of the water, Lots of interesting details like this bag on the floor. We've got the sort of outdoor surreal aquarium thing happening where he's got the goldfish floating around. Flowers that echo the same colors as the goldfish. Pot goldfish. <laughs> Potted plants. A hanging birdhouse with wind chimes. Hanging plants. The tops of other balconies. There's even pipes on the walls and more guardrails. So lots of attention to detail. Everything contributes to this idea of outside in or inside out. Also, there's a color scheme, by the way. There's dominantly blue and orange with a little bit of green. That is a split complement. Here's kind of a, a more um, direct uh, idea, I guess. We've got the person there sleeping in the bed, which is floating in the clouds. Now, not the most complex composition. The bed is centered. 
Um, there's the nice addition of the lamp sort of floating there. Um, and they did a really nice job of rendering the bedspread and showing all of that shading and lighting on the folds of the fabric, really mimicking the idea of the clouds in the background. And the clouds, of course, really rendered beautifully. So what I want to say in this case is those two or three previous projects were really complex. So just one of these would be considered your finalized artwork. Um, this idea, especially if you just took a photograph of clouds, this is less complex. Does that make sense? Okay, so this would be less complex, and if you did an idea like this where your composition was centered, or it looked like it took less time to render things, then maybe you would want to do more than one. All right, here's another digital artwork vector illustration and digital painting. In this case, we've got that same idea, popular, bringing the ocean inside. And in this case, we've got a nice bird's eye view of the person on their bed. So lots of interesting details again. We've got, I like his socks. And they're listening to sort of an old school tape deck. They've got a bubble around their head and earphones on. There's a quilted pattern on the bedspread. They've even got a numbered, some sort of words and numbers on their shirt. All of the fish are sort of creating a circular pattern. And once again, notice the ones that are closer to the person are smaller to suggest depth. And the ones sort of near us, or maybe the ceiling, are larger. We've got lots of texture going on with some of those looser drawn lines. I love the viewpoint of the table lamp and the soft glow around it and the addition of the bubbles. Really nice contrast in terms of the muted blues and then that more sharp red of some of the fish. All right, this one's super awesome. Look at this. Look at the complexity here. We've got obviously this idea of the outside in again with an ocean scene, but this time in the bathroom. And the viewpoint, what is this viewpoint? Not only is it a bug's eye view where we're looking sort of up at the person, but it's also skewed diagonally. So we've got two different unique viewpoints. And then the amazing complexity, the amazing detail, pretty much to every element of the artwork. There's the rendering of the ships and the boats right here in the foreground. Look at the detail on the waves and the reflections of lights on the water. We've got the sort of mini city scene behind the boats. Our first floating shark right here with the cast shadow on the wall of the tub. We've got a side table with the bottle of wine and the wine glass. Look at the reflection on the wine glass. And then moving upwards, we've got the person a uh, girl there in the bathtub, We've got a little towel behind her. She's reading a book. We've got a suggestion of the knee. Obviously the rendering of the face, really realistic. Then we've got the tiles above the tub with all of that detail. Each tile looks three-dimensional with the little light source reflecting. And then all those beautiful fish and clouds floating. So all the detail on the octopus, the orca, the whales, there's a stingray, there's different kinds of jellyfish, there's different little tiny fish swimming around. We've got transparencies on the gold, um, the jellyfish. Then there's the clouds creating that circular effect. All of the beautiful rendering of the clouds with the lights and the darks to create that sort of fluffy, yet plump effect. And then notice the reflections on or cast shadows, technically, cast shadows and reflections on the tiled wall of not only the clouds, but also the sea life. So really beautiful, really complex. Another fun one here, we've got that outside scene. We've got the house, the mountains, the trees, the foliage, the sky, the starry sky, the moon, and then the girl with the animals floating in a bathtub transported by a cloud made out of stars. Right. So nice concept, lots of great complexity. 
Um, really great contrast in this sense, the lighting of the moon, the stars, the tub, and the house in contrast to the darkness of the landscape and the sky. Another example of a great digital artwork here, we've got this bug's eye view, and we have this interesting viewpoint of looking down through, as if we're this person really up high, looking down through our own legs at the city scene below. And then to top it off, we've got all those goldfish or koi fish swimming around in the air. So really cool viewpoint, beautiful rendering of the clothes, the gridded city scene, the contrast of all of those orange and black and white fish. All right, here's a fun one idea. Again, this idea of the bed in the clouds. Some interesting things happening here with the dream catcher. Dream catcher floating above the bed. Really beautiful detail on it. And we've got all of those sort of stingray manta rays swimming through the dream catcher. Fun little addition of the dog. By the way, do you recognize the dog with the antlers? So same artist that did one of the previous artworks. All right, another interesting one using that idea of the ocean inside the house. But in this case, we've got this beautiful rendering of the staircase creating tons of movement, tons of pattern with the stairs, the vertical lines of the spindles. And then we've sort of got a person reaching out or maybe drowning <laughs> right there in the floor, where the floors become the ocean. And then this interesting wallpaper sort of looks floral, but if you look at it closely, it almost looks like sea life too. And then the extraordinary shadows. Look at all the shadows on the stairs, on the dresser. All right, this one's a photo composite. So you can see here that we've got the photograph of the sort of field here with wild plants. They took a little table out there. He's supposedly writing. And there's all of his floating papers. Some of them are closer to us and blurred. Some of them are on the floor. Some of them are floating. All right, now we've got this woman inside of the fishbowl, the fish outside. Really nice, delicate digital painting. Really nice contrast. Lots of great transparency. All right, here's an outdoor scene. All right, notice in this case, they've gone to sort of a forest setting. Lots of really great density of trees. And then this, you know, reminds me of a campsite because there's this area that's been cleared. And they've set up this pretty much whole house. We've got the bed with the two bedside tables and lamps, the bathtub in the background, the couch really bright contrast with the red in the foreground and the lamp behind it they even put some pillows on it we've got some really nice hard lighting on the person all right here's another fun one of the bed out there what do you guys think is this a snowy scene or is this like the salt flatlands that looks like the salt flatlands to me all right, but really beautiful landscape there. Nice addition of the, of course, mountains in the distance, the texture created on the ground, the soft lighting. We see some nice side lighting coming in on his face. Okay, this is a room camera obscura. So pay attention, this is not Photoshopped. What's happening here is this is the bedroom. So there's the girl on the bed. And this is the outside of the room projected into the room upside down. Because remember, a camera obscura takes what's outside, projects it inside, and it will be a reflection. It will be upside down. So notice we've got the trees that are outside, the cars, other houses. And you can see through that reflection, she probably had like a mirror on the wall and some posters on the wall. All right, I can see closet doors right here. I can even see patterned wallpaper, which is technically the sky from outside being reflected on the room. 
Here's another camera obscura. So a lot of people did this at their bedroom, right? So there's a girl in the bed, and you can see the outside of the room is reflected in upside down. There's all those trees, the blue sky of the outdoors. I can even see the trees reflected on the bedroom door. All right, here's a camera obscura from a uh, well-known artist. Uh, and this one is actually a retrospective at a museum. So in this case, you can see they sort of emptied out the room and just left that ladder near the door. And they have projected the outside into the room. You can see the inversion of the landscape here. We've got the sort of grassy field, some trees, the blue sky. Okay, this is the great indoors. All right, so during um, quarantine, there was a photographer who was a travel photographer. That's what she loved to do, but she was stuck inside. And she created this idea of creating travel, nature, adventure photography inside. So here we have a scene of a little guy going hiking. What are the mountains made out of? <laughs> Pancakes and syrup. So notice here, we've got the stacked pancakes, little mini pancakes, and the syrup dripping down to create that little river and waterfall. And then they photoshopped in a picture of the guy. And the fun part here, notice they've got the shallow depth of field. We have really nice um, focus on the pancake in the foreground and the person. And then the mountains or pancakes in the district distance are out of focus and a little bit blurry. And then we've also got another viewpoint of the same scene. We've got the bird's eye view here now. So now we've got the bird's eye view up here as if we are looking really far down at the river made out of syrup. Okay, and then in terms of process, take a look. She shows us how she did it. So here's her camera pointed at her setup. And you'll see here that it's really just set up on a table. She's got a plate here of the pancakes. She used white tablecloth. Think about, remember what we learned about lighting and scrims? Remember how white reflects light? Black absorbs light. So she used that white tablecloth to help reflect light. She's even got these white paper plates on the sides to help reflect light. And notice that she zoomed way in and cropped out any of the background. In the previous photos, we did not know where this was, right? So taking away the context of the table made this way more believable. All right, more examples from this photographer. Here we've got the little scene as if they're walking through a forest. You can tell that she used broccoli and a little figurine of a hiker. And notice here she shows us, this is a bedroom. She set up the whole scene on the bed. And she used green blankets. Looks like she used a brown paper plate for the, I've got those paper plates. They look like bamboo. Anybody ever use those biodegradable plates that look like bamboo? And for the ground and the broccoli for the trees. And you can see here how she showed us how she framed it so that the little blanket that she propped up in the distance looks like the sky. And we no longer know that this was you know, created on a bed. Okay, more scenes that she created here, like the forest of asparagus trees, a little bowl with uh, blue food coloring, and the little miniature figurines in a canoe. All right, here's another hiker, and she shows us how did she make those little hills out of granola bars, protein bars. So chopped up those little granola bars, and look at all that fun texture that looks like the rolling hills. Used a tie-dye pillowcase there propped up in the distance to look like a waterfall. All right, some more scenes with that tie-dye pillow. Notice we've got some lighting coming through the two pillows as if it's the sun looking through a waterfall. Okay, and in this case, she's showing us the real photo that she took in Arizona, Grand Canyon, and how she mimicked it using paper bags and lighting.
And you can see that she did all of these right there in her bedroom at home using just sheets, lamps, pillowcases, vegetables, paper plates. Here's the original scene she took, and here's her recreation. So notice that she propped up a white sheet, put a flashlight behind it, put a little uh, piece of wood as a dock, and photoshopped in the people fishing. All right, so really creative, lots of fun scenes, all from the same artist. Here, look at this really cool, like, looks like nighttime cave scene, but really it's those, um, what's it called, bio essence? Yeah, and notice that they're glowing in the cave, right? And so she reset that up with using that blue light shining onto the white fabric. And actually, I see some tin foil there creating that nice reflection. All right, creating that salt fields again, literally using salt or maybe sugar. You can see here how she set it up on the bed. Really playing around with lighting, by the way, so that we see all the little three-dimensional hills. Playing around with a shoot through here, we've got the blurred foreground, in focus, middle ground, blurred background. Okay, so look at the variety, look at the creativity, all setting up these different scenes all in her bedroom. So lots of variety. Cute little sunset there with the cotton balls and the flashlight behind the sheet. Here's a better look at that, creating the sort of canyon walls with the paper bag and lighting. This one's fun, the guy is ice mining. Okay, here are some examples from Robert Park Harrison. Um, I showed you this before for surrealism. He takes all of his own photographs and does not use Photoshop. He actually blends them together in a dark room. And in this case, we've got this idea of the gears outside coming up through the ground. And he's sort of turning them as if he can somehow change nature or nature is mechanical. Here's another one from Robert Park Harrison, also works with his wife as a team. Here they actually, this is not photoshopped, right? There is actually a bed in the water. There's actually hammers and a pail and an umbrella and an old school typewriter and a lamp in the water. All right, here they are outside with that bed frame and the trees growing up through the ground. And remember, it's not Photoshopped, but they do, you know, stage things. So he could be taking a picture of him laying on that mattress and then in the dark room, blending those two images together to create this levitating floating effect. All right, here's a more contemporary um, photo composite. We've got the woman as if she just came out of a shopping mall on the escalator, but it came out into the forest, right? Beautiful lighting going on with that escalator and the lighting here on the ground and on the reflecting off of the bags and behind her. This is from Eric Johansson. Remember him? Another one, Eric Johansson's. All right, we've got that outdoor scene, except here we have the wood planks, the black sheep, the rug, all of this kind of like leftover painting equipment. But then notice here in the night sky, how did it come inside? The night sky turns into a room. See that really soft edges of the ceiling and the walls, and then the sort of raw lamp coming from the ceiling. So really a beautiful use of details, lighting, subtlety, these subtle lines that suggest that it's actually inside. Here's another camera obscura. So you can see the room and then the outside image inverted in the room, the trees falling upside down and onto the floor. Another camera obscura. Really fun juxtaposition of the outside in, and in this case, the outside is upside down. Another camera obscura. You can tell, can you tell that they're at a hotel? 
So they're in that bed, they're in the bed and they have those robes, the white robes you always see at hotels. And then we have the outside of the hotel with all of the, the pool and the deck chairs. Another camera obscura, really nicely done in this case. They've got the room sort of cleared out and they reflected a ton of the sky. So really nice clouds going on outside and they've reflected the clouds onto the floor of the room as if they're touching the clouds. Okay, so lots of options to choose from. Go through our options again and decide which one you'd like to start exploring. And then you're going to head over to the Inspiration Board tab again. Okay, and you're going to get started on your two Inspiration Boards. All right, remember your first board is your large board. It's the board where you pull lots of different images that inspire you whether they're photographs or artworks or textures or maybe even quotes or words that inspire you. All right, once you're done with your large board full of all the random stuff that inspires you about the idea, you're going to take a look at that board and you're going to start to look for motifs, patterns, repeating ideas that you were drawn to. And you're going to pull those and focus your work down. All right, so remember, here's our, some of our examples. All right, here was their large board where they pulled lots of stuff that inspired them. All right, and then they narrowed it down. All right, choosing the images that truly started appealing to them, had things in common, whether it was style, technique, color, or pattern. Remember, you're going to include a color palette that you're going to work with for your project. And... For each finalized photo or image that you grabbed, I want to see a brief explanation of how it relates to your project. So how did it inspire you? What technique could you take away from it, et cetera?